So it's Friday, and you know what Fridays are for me. It's deadlift day. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. I've already done like two legs days this week and they were quite intense. Um, so I'm going to be pretty tight in my hips and my hammies. Um, so these warm ups for me are going to be really, really important for this reason. Uh, so yeah, maybe I can give you guys some tips to help you. Uh, another question is, if you've got any problems with your deadlift, please drop a comment below. I want to know what they are because that means that I can maybe put out another video that might help you with your deadlift and make it more effective for you. So. Let's get it. My favorite word. Let's get it. Are you ready? Woo! The crowd goes well. Oh! Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to warm up. You ready to do this? <laughs> Give me the camera. You can the camera, but I just want it. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. Water's up to my chin. Once I fight it to the very end. Now that I've finished my warm-ups, I'm feeling pretty good. What I like to do before I just jump into some heavy weight is to work up slowly. And this is a question I get asked a lot. Some people are like, oh, you know, how many sets do you do before you do your working sets? And that's really up to you. It depends what you've planned for your working set to be. Um, so to make sure that when you are warming up that you don't count that as a working set. It is a warm-up to get to the working set, if that makes sense. So everyone has their own different style of deadlifting um, and they all do different little um, crazy little, I don't know if you've ever watched a watched powerlifting show or just other people doing it, but they all have their little like things that they do. Uh, and there's always a reason behind why. Um, but for me, what I like to do um, is make sure that I'm completely on top of the bar. I do this by coming down without like leaning back. So I get as far down as possible with staying upright and that's going to help put my bar path in a really good position because the closer I can be, the easier it's going to be for me to be able to push the bar up in a straight line. And that's what you need to think about when you're lifting. The further away it is, the harder pulling from your back, the harder. You've got these strong legs so you use them. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. There he is. Right there. <laughs> There is a reason why, and it's basically to tell yourself that you're about to do a lift, to get in the patterning habit, uh, which is really important that you are doing that lift in the same kind of pattern that works for you and um, your strongest position. The setup is always the same. my top set it was 145 kilos which is 300 I'll put what that is in pounds on the screen <laughs> um, but I did that for a set of four so that's really good the thing is with deadlifts I've only been deadlifting sumo deadlifts one time per week and to maintain your strength and continually get stronger, you need to be putting in the volume and putting in the work. And I haven't been doing a lot of that over the last couple of months, to be honest. I've been focusing on other areas. So my volume has always been quite low. Therefore, I'm working up my volume to get to a bigger weight. My best deadlift ever is 160 kilos for two. 
Uh, so I know that the strength is there, but I just need to allow my body to um, build back up to that. And that all comes with um, consistency, volume, um, you know, practice, regular training. So if you feel like you're someone that uh, has lost a little bit and you haven't been as strong as what you had hoped for, like you have been in the past, I just really encourage you not to get down about it. It all comes down to programming. This is why it's important to stick to a program. I created my program Build for this very reason with my girls um, because it gives them a structured program to get stronger, it has uh, a lot of volume in it, progressive overload, so it's going to make sure that not only are you going to get stronger but you're going to look stronger, feel stronger, uh, give you everything that you ever hoped for in a program which is really hard to find. Um, which I know, I've been through many programs myself and I just found I was taking some from them, taking some from them, uh, trying to find what works for me and now I've put it into my own program that i found works for me and I hope that it works for you too. I will give you the link for this in this video if you're interested in checking out my programming. But um, yeah, watch these deadlifts over the next couple of weeks because I'm going to be putting in some volume work to get them back up to where they were a couple of months ago. And that's all it takes. Honestly, it's all it takes. If you remain consistent with your training and your eating and your sleeping and all that kind of stuff, your recovery, you can't go wrong. You, you seriously can't go backwards. Sit down now. 125 kilos on the bar. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to do a set of four. Get that volume in. This is my second set of four, so it's all building up. A common misconception or fear about deadlifting when it comes to your lower back is that it's bad. Uh, unless you have a medical condition or um, you know, you've been advised, strongly advised not to by a health professional, I guess like my opinion is that this will actually strengthen your lower back and maybe the back pain that you have is because your lower back is actually weak. So for me, I used to be very fearful of this very thing that, um, you know, that lifting would put me out or something would happen. If done correctly, and you do learn how to do it correctly, uh, it's, it's beneficial. It, it's not detrimental to your um, health or your back. So yeah, that's just maybe a misconception you've heard before. That's my opinion. Um, another point that I might make is if you find that conventional, which is what we just finished just then, is uncomfortable on your back, which I have found in the past, um, I, you can do sumo because I feel no back pulling at all on sumo uh, just because of the position is so upright. So because you are more upright, your legs are going to be more involved in the sumo. And that's also another reason why I love it and maybe it's something that you may incorporate into your training if you have maybe the same issue or fears about pulling a conventional. But both lifts are great, especially mixed together uh, to train for overall back strength. So um, here's my little opinion about that. Or if you are feeling like you do suffer from a lot of back pain or back discomfort, make sure that you are doing stretches specific to that area so that you are getting some relief. So the two stretches that I would recommend for this is the scorpion and the V-sit. Sometimes it's easy to think that because your back hurts that it's just your back and the thing to be aware of is that it could be many other reasons why you're suffering from back pain. So try to think about areas that surround the back which is your abdominals and your glutes. So when it comes to strengthening your abdominals what I would recommend is the bird dog and the dead bug. Yeah. If love is patient, why is it that I just want to rush things? Why I want to touch things? Tugging on them hot strings. Love is kind of so you want to make sure that your glutes are activated because this is going to support your back. So great movements for this is the bridges and the clamps. Looking at these other girls, 10 out of 10. When is it end? When does shallow begin? But no one always trusts appearance is not looking with them. That is my session done and dusted. I'm definitely feeling taxed. But I feel like that's how you should feel at the end of a session because then you know that you've given it your all and maximal effort. Um, so thanks for tuning in today. I hope these tips have helped you. It's just um, really exciting for me to be able to share what I've learned and give you as much as I can. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel because this is something I want to grow this year and just put so much effort into to, to reach and help as many people as I can. So please subscribe, drop a comment, let me know your thoughts and I'll catch you guys really soon.
what you call the bloopers. 